All right, today we are printing ABS on the Ender 3 version 2, and we have a print here ready to come off. I wanted to show you a few things real quick. So the first thing you'll notice is the draft shield, and I'm going to show you how to implement this in Kira in just a moment. But if you take a look at this, you can see that it is very, very warped. And that is intentional. That is the purpose of the draft shield. It absorbs the heat fluctuation from the outside to the inside, and it takes on all the warping while holding the heat from the hot end inside. So you can see this slight bowing. This actually printed in one layer vertically like a base mode print, but you can see the indentations where it has started to warp from the ambient temperature. Now, if we remove this guy, and I'm going to go ahead and just pull it off here, the model underneath should be quite fine. So it looks like it just, yep, just yanked that right off. And here is our model. Now, this is a sculpture I did in ZBrush. It was fairly quick and simple, but there are some intricate details. And if you take a look, you'll see there's no warping, no layer separation, or anything like that. So this is a pretty flawless ABS print. So if you'd like to see how to do this, I'm going to show you the profile right now. But before we get into it, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button so you can be updated on all our future videos. All right, today we're going to be talking about printing ABS on the Ender 3 version 2. And you're going to see my profile and pretty much the breakdown of what I changed between this and the PLA profile I already released. Now, a minute ago, you got a glimpse of my model, and that's all well and good. But don't expect your prints to come out like that. Uh, expect to have issues changing between filaments unless you do that hot end fix in the last video. The last video of this series was about inserting a specific length of Bowden tube into the hot end to prevent the Bowden tube and coupler from basically separating inside the liner a little bit, which can warm at these higher temperatures and melt your filament that your lower temperature filaments then won't be able to push through. So. Um, you're going to put a Bowden tube in there and line the entirety of the hot end with it to keep any spots from overheating and causing jams there. Um, once you've done that, this is the video for you. So we were printing ABS today. You saw that little wood face sculpture that I made in ZBrush that I printed just last night, and it came out really, really well. You also saw, and I'll show it again here, the warped draft around that. So. Um, or draft shield, excuse me. We'll get to those settings in just a minute, but let's start with the basics. Obviously, I'm printing ABS. I'm changing my material settings. Nothing above this has been changed. I'm printing at the same layer height. That's 0.16, and all my line widths, everything are the same as PLA. Uh, I set my temperature to 245, which is a little bit higher than the recommended 240, and that is because this machine, once at temp, is going to start fluctuating between about 240 and 245, uh, if I set it at 240, it'll fluctuate at about 235 to 240. And I want to keep it kind of at the top end of, of the 240 range. So build plate temperature, I am obviously increasing in this one. I had it basically turned off before uh, or set super low, I think, to 45 in the PLA profile. This is a major thing. So I'm using a glass bed. Uh, so I don't need to worry about demagnetizing the bed. I could crank this up all the way to 100 if I wanted. That is a large surface at such a high temperature. It bothers me a little bit more than having just the tiny nozzle heated up. So I tend not to go that high. I have before, but the effect is basically the same. Uh, we're going to trap the heat from that build plate around our model, which will keep the layers from peeling apart and separating. So that's done with a special mode in here. But in order to trap that heat, we need some substantial amount of heat coming from the bed. So that's basically it temperature wise. Uh, <clears throat> we'll move on here. Print speed is pretty much the same as it was. I did lower it a little bit because I have a lot of fine details in this print, but feel free to leave it at 65. Well, if you're getting this profile, it'll be at 55 because it's exactly this profile. But uh, one of the things I did change is we still have retraction enabled. I did turn it down a little bit, and the reason for that is the longer you're holding this sustained heat in your hot end, the more of it is going to eventually creep up into your heat sink and that's one of the reasons we did that hot end fix because that red heat sink in there uh, if it gets too warm and the top of the Bowden tube gets pulled it creates a little gap between the nozzle and the tube and then it's really hard to get that stuff out um, so putting that washer in there with that fixed piece of Bowden tube creates enough pressure to keep the inner piece from backing up 
It still allows the top part to come up and get grabbed by the little washer that they have in there but it won't allow anything to harden in between any surfaces that need to be pushed back together later. So basically, um, yeah, I, I don't wanna retract molten plastic into the hot end. And this just makes me feel a little bit safer as far as keeping that heat a little bit further towards the nozzle and away from the heat break and up the throat. So next we're gonna be talking about cooling. ABS completely turned off. Uh, we'll talk about some different settings you can use for PETG, but if you're using ABS, obviously, like I said, we're trying to keep that ambient heat trapped by this draft shield we're going to turn on, so you do not want any fan blowing on it and trying to fluctuate the air around your model. You want everything to sit right there because that's what's going to help you form a nice ABS print since we don't have an enclosure on this machine. Uh, I am using support. I use tree support. We'll leave that on. That is pretty much my go-to default, especially now that it's in the actual settings and not experimental. And I did use a raft. Uh, you'll notice most of the times when you print a standard print that comes with your printer on that disc that they are using a raft to print it. And there is a reason for that. Uh, it's because it gives you something easier to adhere to. It's a little bit more forgiving as a bottom layer. It's pretty easy to remove. It helps with the removability of the model in its entirety. Um, there's just a lot of reasons for that. But with this mode we're going to be using, we're going to go down to experimental mode. Uh, we're going to use, where is it at? Uh, draft shield right here. I have it turned on. So this is the single most important setting that we are going to talk about when we're talking about printing an ABS. You want to make sure that you have this on. And if you don't have it, you can either search in your settings right here or I believe, yeah, if you click the star, you can go to the settings here and just search draft shield. So I have it checked, that's why it shows up. If yours isn't showing up in here, search it in the settings and then check it and it will pop up in there. That is going to basically build a skirt uh, which is a single layer thin line all the way around our model. Then it's going to build our model and then it's going to move up and it's going to keep building that skirt until it builds a wall. And that's that wall you saw earlier that became all wavy because the temperature on the outside and the inside were hugely different and it causes that ABS to buckle and sort of warp like that. Luckily, it still builds relatively straight and does a good job of holding the heat inside like we want it to and that allows our model to build up without warping because it's got that hot air trapped around it. And there you have it folks, that's pretty much the gist of printing with ABS. You can go ahead and grab this profile at the download link below. Make sure that you have your draft shield turned on and that you've done that hot end fix and you will get lovely, lovely ABS prints just like this guy. So uh, I have no complaints. I think this came out really well. Um, <laughs> And I mean, look at, look at, just look at the detail in this guy. It's like, you can almost see the brush strokes I made through the clay in parts of it when I was sculpting it. So, uh, really, really happy with the results and I hope they work out well for you too. Don't forget to leave me a like down below, leave a comment if there's anything else that you'd like to see. And of course, hit that subscribe button so you can get all of our future videos as they come out. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Technivorous channel is brought to you by these fine Patreon supporters. Well, that's it guys. That's going to wrap up this video. If you've noticed the shirt, the merch is available. Go ahead and check out the Teespring merch link down below. It won't be available on a channel store until I reach 10,000 subscribers. And so far, I am just about to hit 5,000. So uh, it'll be a little while, a couple more months before you see this on the actual channel. But they are available now. I have a couple other designs. Feel free to pop over there and check them out. And know that any purchase through the Teespring site definitely helps to promote our site here and increase the channel's ability to make videos in the future. So we appreciate all your support. Don't forget to check out the Teespring link, check out our Patreon link, leave a like on this video and hit that subscribe button because we have a lot more coming at you in the coming days.